When we're writing PHP software or running somebody else's PHP software, we may often run, a run across a class of errors where part of the message uh, has the two phrases, header already sent and output started at. Uh, and so what I want to do in this video is talk about what this error means and some of the ways that you can, if you're getting it, uh, try to fix it on uh, the server end. So first off, a demonstration of the error itself. So uh, here I have a very simple block of PHP code. Uh, I have a, a command called session start. Don't know, uh, you don't need to know what that means. It just means it kind of starts like an internal process in PHP for remembering things when we navigate from page to page. It's very common, uh, in fact. Uh, and then I have a very simple line that says echo sample. This just means print the word sample to the screen. And then finally, we issue a die command so that we don't process anything else, right? So we essentially uh, issue three commands. We start a session, print the word sample to the screen, and then leave the page. And when I run this, it looks a little something like this. We print the word sample to the screen, and we exit. Uh, but watch what happens now if I reverse these two operations. That is, I put the echo before the session start. Uh, there is our error, and sure enough, there's our two key phrases. Headers already sent, and output started at. So what does this error mean and why did just swapping these two uh, uh, instructions cause this to happen? Well, the reason why it happened is for reasons that are internal to PHP, uh, we can't actually have a echo command before session start. Um, more generally speaking, we can't output something to the browser or attempt to before we start a session. And it is important to note here that we actually don't even need text in this. It could just be an empty uh, uh, string like this and we'll get the same error. Um, for the technically minded then, essentially what it means is uh, this error says, header's already sent, and it tells us where the output started at. So in this case, the output started on page zero.php, it's this guy, and it started on line five. And sure enough, if I look at line five, here's that echo statement. Um, what makes this error slightly annoying for newcomers is that we actually break up the two places where we look for the error. So the first is output started at, and we go to line five, but then where the warning was actually triggered was on once again page zero.php, but line seven. So line seven, of course, is the session start command. So essentially that's what it means. Now, if we do get this, uh, what does it mean? Well, it means one of two things. If you're the developer of the software, uh, this is something that is easy to do when you're first learning PHP, right? You know that you need to start a session, but maybe you're going to output some code first. Uh, the other way this can happen is if you have some other type of error that happens uh, before a session is started. So maybe you're not explicitly trying to write text to the screen, but you're doing some kind of database call or some web service, and that service or web uh, database call is generating an error. And so in other words, uh, if that happens, uh, because an error is generated in some code up here, and then the session starts, that can cause the exact same class of error. Again, it doesn't matter what we're outputting here, it just means that we're trying to output something to the screen. So the first way that we could fix it is, if we've written the software, uh, to do this. First, look for the obvious errors like this, and if you can't find any, run the page so that the error is generated, and then look in your PHP error log to see if you can trace up uh, the message so that you find an earlier error. One of the common ways I like to describe this is to say that this is masking something else. So the first error part, this output started at, in this case line five, is usually what the core error is, and then this is just a side effect of that error occurring. So the core, ma uh, the core problem happened on line five, it just happens to be that we try to start a session on line seven. Starting the session isn't the problem, what we did on line five is. So in other words, run your page and then look for this error, but then look a few entries up before that to see if you can spot an error. The second class of errors, though, is if you've downloaded software from somewhere else. So for example, Rack Forms or Rack Forms Express. If you don't actually have access to this source code, then what do you do? Well, even though this isn't the greatest way to do this, uh, because again, usually this is masking something a little bit more serious, one way that we can actually fix this is to turn on what's called output buffering. Now, if you have access to your server's PHP INI file, and in many cases you will, even with the shared hosting account, uh, GoDaddy gives you full access to the PHP INI file, uh, is essentially to go into that INI file and under output buffering, turn it from off to on. So I'm going to change that from off to on. I'm going to save it. 
and then I'm going to restart my web server. Now, notice we haven't changed anything about our code right here. I'm simply going to run the page again, and now we don't get an actual error. Now, yes, we're printing an empty string here, but just to prove it here, I can actually print the word sample, and all is fine. So it turns out with this specific error then, uh, session start is sensitive to this output buffering uh, feature. And so it could possibly be, even though it's not the greatest solution, because again, there's probably something a little bit deeper going on. Um, one way that we could fix this is by turning on output buffering in your PHP INI file. Now there's two ways that we can do this. I could simply say on, or I can give it a number value in bytes. So in this case, I could say 90,092 bytes, and it's going to do the exact same thing for us. It's still going to mask that error. Again though, it is important to note that if you're writing your own code, that's the first thing you should do. Run the code, don't change anything, and look at your PHP error log to see if you can find above this entry something that says what a core issue is. If it's your own code, uh, then this is probably the best way to find out uh, where the error is and to fix it. Maybe it's something simple, again, like this little logical error where we should just swap these two instructions. Um, or maybe it's something deeper, again, like a database call that's failing. If this is somebody else's code, again, as we just talked about, this is a viable solution to get something up and running. Turn on output buffering, and it'll mask something deeper. However, I would still very much recommend looking at your PHP error logs. And to do that, you probably want to contact your web host and ask them where they are. Uh, but to look at those error logs and then let the developer of that software know this error is occurring on my system. Is there anything you can do about it? And in many cases, there will be. Certainly in the case of the Rack Forms or Rack Forms Express, if you run across any of these issues, absolutely, if you can, grab those PHP error logs and send them my way. And we'll absolutely take a look at that error and see if we can fix it for you. So that is that. Uh, if you have any questions about this or anything else related to Rackforms, info at rackforms.com is where you can be reached. And thanks for your time.